Welcome back. Now, the 2021 Corruption Perception Index is out, and Ghana's performance isn't great. We placed uh, 73rd out of 180 countries in the 2021 um, index. Now, apart from that, our score remains at 43 out of a total of 100. And this indicates that Ghana didn't make... 43 over 100. <laughs> Ghana failed to make progress in the fight against corruption in that regard. And we've not seen any major increase. What does that mean? And uh, It leaves more to be desired, but what does that mean? Is it a lack of political will? Is it really about us individual Ghanaians who are really not doing enough to fight corruption or care even about corruption? We have an office of special prosecutor. We have the auditor general that keeps tracking uh, expenditures and what's being spent and, and what is leaking. We have an anti-corruption action plan. Why are we not doing well in that regard? And that's the subject of our, our next discussion. So first we will go to the Zoom uh, line, we'll speak to uh, Doctor, uh, to Professor De uh, David Abdullahi. He is with the African Parliamentarians Network Against Corruption. So let me just take his first thoughts about the results of the Perception Index and what <coughs> it means. Good morning to you, Professor Abdullahi, and thank you uh, for joining us. Um, what are your thoughts about? you know, the results of the 2021 Perception Index. I remember when you joined us here on Key Points some three weeks ago, you did mention that corruption was going to be a big issue, and um, now it is. So what are your thoughts on how we've performed and why? Hello, Prof. Can you hear me? Okay, looks like Prof can't hear us, so uh, we'll try and correct that. And uh, let me come to our guests in studio. We'll be running till uh, 9.50. So, yes, so uh, I'll let you uh, give your points, uh, Dr. Leaving. Amwa. All right. We are leaving for you now. want to run away? No, yes. you have to stay no, at went, least for a while. So we're going to finish nine. <laughs> I, I will not be like you. I will let you speak. So go ahead. No, because you're afraid. Mm. So, yeah, you know something. so so okay, so government's performance isn't in fact, great. In fact, in fact, the 43 has but it's not worse than we took over from NDC. They know he knows. But they've had a score of 48 oh. before, oh. which was far better. Their best ah. performance was 48. But, but they are worse. Is worse, isn't it? No. As it goes up, what is no, it? as it goes what perception. Uh, uh, in, fact, in any case, perception. What is perception? Perception could be true or false. Let's be very honest. Perception. Right now, you let me give you a lift from here to Medina. Roll down my screen. About 100 people, Kenyan, sorry, should see me and you. Later on, go and ask them the opinion. If you open phone lines, those who called against MPP or NDC, about 90% are for them. Not out of properly compared facts and figures. I rather believe in corruption issue that we can validate based on court of competent jurisdictions. NDC, anytime, not even one regime, all the two regimes they've come, courts of competent jurisdiction has jailed them. When is they said that uh, former President Mohammed initiated one? Who told you that, that one was going to end in jail? But if they have not lost power. Let me finish. I'm coming. So perception, corruption perception, I'm not saying we should throw it away. Because it can influence decision-making processes. But you cannot validate that between the two. And that could fall. What did they get? Including NDC guy. Wah, wah, boom, boom. This. They will jail us. They came eight years. They could not jail one person. So you cannot say they were corrupt. I'm not saying there's no corrupt in MPP. Corruption in MPP and NDC. I can't say that. I'll be dishonest. A whole system. You have somebody who is corrupt. But what we have to look at is that the regimes, whose regime has been able to put in place anti-corruption models and policies, whether they've been efficient or not. It's also another matter. Can but, I come in now? Procurement, oh, let can me learn with the models. Procurement Act Bill, who brought it? Internal Audit Act, who brought it? Financial Administrative Act, who brought it? Even the special, is it the prosecution thing? Tell me, where on this earth, in Africa, that a, a, a president will put in place anti-corruption institution and will put in charge a leading member of the opposition? It means that 
there is the readiness and the political will. Whether that the relationship and the processes were managed well or not is also another thing to decide. But at least we have shown that we want to operate open culture system and fight corruption. Two, we have not been jailed by any court of open jurisdiction when we are in government and out of government. They have all the time that they are in government and out of government, they are jailed. Okay, so this let me come fact. in now because you keep raising that. This the is point fact. is, isn't it's it true that the government may not be prosecuting its own? You are going it's after the opposition. I'm sure we had, no, no, we've that, had, okay, no, please, we had, we had, we had Galam well, say where, was where, yes, where people close to the government, politically exposed peoples were accused and mentioned. Accused. No one has mentioned them. Accused. We had procurement accused. breaches we with with, have, with the have, Sputnik V. Have, have, we had procurement breaches with the PPA boss. Let me Nobody no, no, has yeah, been prosecuted for you that. Wrong. You are wrong. I told you, I quoted PFM Act. Let people explain that thing. That when there is health epidemic or pandemic, when there is natural disaster or war, our fiscal policies and rules of our constitution, what is the meaning of that? What is the meaning of so the what, So how do so you, how do you justify how do you justify the PPA boss who we has he was indicted by Shraj? It was clear, so, and that is why the president. But that should be prosecuted. It's not being because, done because this because person said, is politically you know why exposed. I'm making this comparative analysis because you said that NDC government once upon a time scored the perception, and I'm saying that you can't use perception. We can the, use perception. You cannot. It gives you, you a view of whether the government like, is doing you, well in this. tackling let corruption. Structures and putting laws in place is probably not enough. Yes, you have so an OSP. Yes, you have an OSP, but all okay, those things. Finish, no, but all those things are not enough. Thank you. If I, I am saying that what you are saying, I can't say they are false or they are true. Your concerns may be genuine. But what I'm trying to say is that. Corruption perception. I'm not saying we should throw it away because it can influence decisions. But you cannot also conclude and make firm decisions and inferences out of that because we live in a country. Me, when I was in secondary school, Upokuari, an old man went and told my mother that I smoke weed. If I have never even smoked cigarette, not even alcohol, I don't even do alcohol. The man was called, he said he saw me soliloquizing, talking to myself. And that he concluded that probably I smoke weed. And my mom, illiterate mother, was so sad. What I'm saying is that in this country, you know that there are a lot of things they said about former President Mahama, present president, all former president and politicians and other people. That I'm not saying all of them are false. But a lot of the times you go into it, they are not factual. Okay. I people make comments, respond to research that people do when it comes to politics based on their political affiliations. So you cannot say that it is 100% to validate corruption perception and draw conclusions and inferences that somebody has done it wrong or right. Unless court of competent jurisdiction. This is a fact. Okay, so I think you've made that point. This let's, is a fact. Let's we try, to do that let's try in Professor. Our context. Let's try Professor um, Abdullah's Zoom again. Hopefully he can hear us now. Uh, Professor Abdullah, can you hear us now, please? Hello, Prof. Hello, Prof. If you can check and unmute, if you can hear us. Hello, Prof. Okay, seems that we are still having challenges there. Let me allow um, Honorable Ricketts Hagan to come in. Our performance hasn't been great. Um, disappointed or expected? Well, well again, thank you. And uh, my brother, I think we, he and I are having a... Again, I am not afraid of you. Oh, so, Honorable uh, Hagan, no, just no, go to the just, point. He just said that. I said, I've allowed you to speak. He said, because you're afraid of me. Maybe he does his joking. So I'm also saying to him, joking, <laughs> that I'm not afraid uh, of you. Honorable, just, just go. I'm not afraid of you. Yeah, that's what you said. Oh, no, you said that. Uh, uh, I'm afraid of you. So. <laughs> that's what you said. Honorable, so please go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Honorable Amwa, you are such a, <laughs> so I'm such a, <laughs> I'm you be, afraid of you. You better be, you better terrible be. Terrible yes, yes. I'm afraid of Please you. go ahead, Honorable Hagan. Um, that is okay for you. It's a, uh, you know, um, in our society, corruption is endemic. 
corruption is endemic in our society, and corruption is basically at all levels. I know many a times um, corruption issues are placed, you know, at at politicians and maybe at uh, you know civil servant. But if you look at throughout our whole you know social structure, you realize that there are a whole lot of things being done at all levels that will basically, you know, be, be, it will constitute a corruption. It is endemic in our society, and we need to make an effort to get, because corruption is costing us so much. Corruption is affecting our development. About $3 billion are here is basically lost through corruption. In, 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 in governments of all shades, there had been issues to do with corruption. This president came into office with the promise that he was actually going to deal with corruption. He has not been seen to deal with corruption, neither has he actually dealt with it. Yes, he set up a special prosecutor. It amounted to nothing. Another person has been put there. And it's ri rightly said, there had been a catalog of incidents, scandals, corruption issues in this government. The government is littered with all sorts of corruption. You mentioned some, the procurement issue, the PDS, the communication one, Kelvy or whatever they call the them. Galamse. And Galamse issues, excavators, um, excavators, are, yeah, disappearing, a whole lot of things. And not a single person. But, is, but isn't Honorable then, Amwa right that perceptions may well, be well, imagined? Well, you see... Uh, the problem with this country and the problem with mostly sub-Saharan Africa is that unless you are actually catch someone in the act and that you are holding the evidence, they will always see it as a perception. Because, you know, there's a famous saying that if somebody is suspected to be corrupt, they, they, if you ask the president or anyone else, they are going to tell you or they are going to ask you where is the evidence. Every time anybody raises a corruption issue, the question becomes, where is the evidence? So it becomes difficult to prosecute people when you don't have the evidence. Also, in other parts, in other parts of this world, you know, people do things, or people are even perceived to be corrupt. They resign from their position, you know, either to be investigated or to clear their name. Here. You will have to take people to the cliff and actually push them before they leave their position. So it is very difficult, you know, to prove that people are corrupt, though we know that it goes on. But then if a president comes up and says that, look, I'm going to fight corruption, he should be seen to be fighting corruption and doing it fairly. You know, you did say, uh, he did say that. Um, they tend to uh, jail a lot of and, the opposition. And, and all that. Okay. At the moment, what is happening? I don't want to call names or anything. With reference to the Opuni trial you are referring well, to? Well, I'm even talking about a recent one of my own brother being taken to court, um, Honorable Forson. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Clearly, we've been out of office for about five years. All of a sudden, in the middle of Yi Levy, challenging them on the Yi Levy and everything, they have found it necessary to take a key person in this whole thing to be sent, you know, to the courts. What for? Simply, it's, it's an, it, they are not actually dealing with corruption. They are trying to intimidate the opposition. Look, when you look at the, 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 <coughs> the, uh, the report, the report that we are looking at, it doesn't only talk about corruption as in, you know, financial gains. It sort of talks about basically lack of transparent, you know, uh, democratic practices. That this government was scored down on the practice of democracy, on fairness. You know, the, the, the country more or less has become like a, you know, kind of a dicta dictatorship. You know, where security agencies and other people are being used to intimidate people. Yes, we are in parliament, practicing democracy, and then somebody calls 
the military and others to come inside the, the, the premises of parliament. And today, nobody has been held accountable. Do you know how close things, things basically got? This is what is happening in this country. Nana Akufuado has no desire to deal with corruption. He has got so much corruption littered in his government. And when you ask them, they say perception. Do you have the evidence? All right, so let's, let's hope, hopefully, yeah. let's but see if we can get Professor Abdullah. Unfortunately, we've been having challenges with his line. Uh, Professor Abdullah, can you hear us now? Yeah, I can hear you. Great, well. great. So first, um, quickly, well, your initial reaction to how Ghana has performed uh, in the 2021 Perception <laughs> Index. Well, what it goes to show is that in the last five years the fight against corruption you know has not progressed that's why there's a, a stagnation because in um you know 2020 and 2021 the score has been the same 43 percent out of 100. now you indicate that it shows that the fight against corruption hasn't progressed but this is a government that has tried to put certain structures in place we have the anti-corruption action plan we also have um you know the office of the special prosecutor uh, we have already other institutions of state mandated to look at how to deal with uh, public sector corruption. We have the Auditor General who has the right of surcharge for anyone who may have misspent, misapplied, or misused monies. So what may be wrong? Is it that what's being done is not being fairly recorded? No, Jifa. I think it's, it's, it's good you mention all these things. Having laws in place are good, but the enforcement is lacking. For example, when you talked about the uh, uh, special prosecutor, wasn't he the same person that made the accusation against the government that uh, his office wasn't funded or well funded and also other accusations? So that is something that most people will look at. When you talked about the Auditor General, wasn't it the fashion in which the Auditor General was removed that most people think was unfair? I think all these are things that contribute to the perception but also, you know, you have uh, the Public Procurement Act and the Financial Administrative Act. All these laws are in place in this country, but no one enforces them. And, you know, when you don't enforce laws, then definitely, you know, you are going to have all these challenges that has to do with our governance. Now, in terms of fighting corruption, I know there's always a lot of focus on public sector officials or government yes. officials or high level uh, people in government. I'm just wondering, yeah. is that fair? Because that then adds to the perception. Shouldn't it, isn't it probably a case of many Ghanaians are no more bothered about corruption? Well, people think well, that, it's it, not, yeah. It's, it's, not, it's not only the senior level persons that are accountable, but if you go to any office, any public sector organization in this country, services that you're supposed to get for free, uh, you have to pay a bribe. So, these incidences of corruption, you know, is always noted when there is no accountability. But it starts from the top. But also, uh, Jifa, it's not only the public. We Ghanaians as a whole should also be held accountable. Our patrimonial uh, culture, whereby you are in a high position, your relative needs a job, <laughs> definitely you find a way to get the person the job. And lately, there have been complaints about, you know, the employment of people into the security system, whereby mostly it's through protocol. So all these create that perception. So it's not only uh, the high-level corruption, but there is also, you know, uh, I call them uh, uh, street-level bureaucrats who are also contributing to that. And then, of course, our own culture. Yeah, so, this so, so, Professor Abdullah, I'm just wondering... Maybe yes. the perception index, we're not doing well or haven't done well on it over the last five years, maybe because Ghanaians as a whole are not making the effort to also deal with corruption. It's not just about maybe government officials or public officials. I mean, on a scale of one to 10, 
if we want to look at the current administration and some of the issues that had been raised, how, for instance, it dealt with the Galamse issues relating to the excavators or Aisha Huan's repatriation yes. or the Ejapa yes. royalties deal, the leaking yes. of 12 billion from the Auditor General's reports and all that. Would you say those things are the reasons why we have the perception stagnated over the last five years or this is really just about all of us? No, no, no. That is the major part. But then the other part, the other blame should be assigned to Ghanaians. If Ghanaians wouldn't accept corruption and then and encourage corruption and don't give bribes, then we're going to do well. But let me let me make one point. During uh, Kufour's government, we had one of the highest highest rating, right? And that is an MPP government. But if you look at Akufuado's government, even compared to Mame's administration, uh, Mame's lowest is Akufuado's highest which is 43. So it has to do with the leadership because Kufour did very well. He had about 81%. Uh, and that is one of the reasons why I'm saying that leadership is important in the Unfortunately, okay. And top people fighting against corruption. And then... Uh, all right, so we'll just try and uh, correct the um, feed there with uh, Professor Abdullahi. But let's come back to studio. Yes, uh, so Dr. Amwa, so you say perception, but the truth is, and you have not addressed the examples that I have raised. Which example? I raised the example of the Galamse <laughs> issues. No one has been prosecuted for the excavator I, issues. Aisha Huan was dispatched I, easily. The view is that because they were powerful uh, government people or politically exposed people aligned with your government, that is why the auditor general, I mean, all oh. these things do not give, see, give a one, good one thing impression. the auditor general thing is, I don't want to speak and it will become like I'm personalizing this. So I'm very careful mm -hmm. dealing with individuals. Don't let us behave like auditor general is perfect. I was perfect. We, I can't say I'm not perfect. I can never say he's not somebody who was inefficient. I can't say that. But the fact that somebody is efficient or not efficient does not mean that a person cannot make mistakes or commit offenses that probably he could have been dealt with by the, the legal procedures or control systems. I even had an issue under his tenor. Maybe it wasn't his fault. Maybe. I was CEO for Maslok. You see, sometimes maybe some subordinates or the institution's actions and inactions also warrant the expectation or suspicion that somebody is using his outfit politically. I'm not saying he was doing that, but I'm saying that occurrences, that's why I'm choosing my words very well, or events or incidents. They wanted to come and audit Maslok. Listen carefully. Maslok, before you can audit Maslok, you should come through Office of Government Machinery. Where there, instead of they, even before they came and did the open conference, some audit staff from here had gone to all some of the regional offices, which was not supposed to be done anywhere, even legally or whatever. I even said, I'm ready to audit because I know that you won't get, we can only create trouble where you're not. Then I was advised by my board that once it's not right, we should be careful because audit, if somebody will create issues for you. He can go and pick something which is not even anything and then highlight on it. So we should write to them to seek that thing from uh, Office, Office of, of Government yeah, Machinery. Exactly, so that they allow me. Madam, we sent the letter two hours time. It was in the public domain. That, oh, I'm running from to be audited. So there are other issues that we all should be careful. What I'm saying is the issues you raise, they are very legitimate. I cannot be here and speak that, oh, they were supposed to be prosecuted and they left them before God, not I'm lying. Maybe I'm not privy to a lot of things or I'm privy to. Okay, so the but question what I'm is... Saying, once they have not been convicted by courts of competent jurisdiction, still, it remains a controversial issue with different opinions. You I, cannot I, conclude that they, they've done wrong. I agree with you, you that until something is... Uh, prosecuted, a completion, a decision is made by a court of competent jurisdiction. But the 
criticism of the current administration is that path is not even being set. Which path? The path to headed to, to go to court. So yet opposition, yet opposition, to yet you have hauled opposition to people to court. So and the question what? is, the government has hauled opposition people to court. So the question is, who? where is the fairness? Uh, what is fairness? No, you must, I know we, I'm not a lawyer, but I think they establish is there something called prima facie case. Whether exactly. So right now, if I said that, oh, Jifa slapped me, it could even be possible that the video will show you are slapping you, I'm slapping you. You know how procedural things are legally. You cannot just wake up and say that because people are right. Look, weren't people putting in the public domain that I had imported second hand cars when that I had not imported into cars? I'm not even getting money from government. They did with pictures, have stolen 28 million. Madam, these were all, in fact, they are 100% lies. God is my witness. Okay, but they but do all this. So, sometimes even the speculations, we should all be there. I'm not saying I don't agree to what you're saying. And those things that you have listed, I am MPP MP. Trust me, I'll go into it. I'll go and look for documents. And if there's something like that, I will support your statement. But not until these things are done. So, take me to it. I'll go and look for information from all stakeholders including those involved, and even the government, whatever. Then, give me some time. I'll come back to you and say that, Jifa, what you're saying, 100% or not. But not until court of competent judicial, because they also have their case to be cross-examined. They have their cases to also defend. I hope you understand what I'm saying. I personally thought, oh, the Auditor General issued. Because I interacted with him once, and I saw he was very efficient, that man. In spite of the problems I had, with the whole institution, my place. I can't blame him. Others might have had information that I didn't have. So what I'm saying is that this corruption perception, they are doing well. Those who are doing corruption perception, they are doing well. It's not an easy job. And they've done well, and they don't do it only under MPP. It's gone through. So I say kudos. They've done well. But as a country, we cannot validate completely and draw inferences and say that perception, because it's perception, it is true. No. So, so you can't, so you dispute that the current administration, if you look at the figures, and Professor Abdullahi told us that even from Prof, uh, President Kufour's time, he had very high scores. Mahama's scores were up and down. His worst, the Mahama administration's worst score is the current Akufuado government's best score. Based and on remains what? Based, on what? based on the criteria. So are you saying that Let's that see. doesn't matter at Kufour? all? Oh, have I said it doesn't matter? No, I'm just I saying. Saying, But I never said that. I'm okay. saying that as much as we cannot throw that away, you cannot also validate because you have lost. Right now, can we base on just recession and then punish you? Can we do that? As the legal practitioners, one is not guilty to proving guilty by court of competent jurisdiction. It could even be that for first time, sorry, it could even be worse than the perception we had. It could be less. Former President Mohammed, it could even be less than the perception we had. And other time, it could be less or more. What I'm making reference to is that we should also contextualize perception in Ghana, the kind of people we are. Because you put up questions, you interact with people, you collect primary data and secondary data. And most of the times, look, country that you have geographical voting in terms of resource, based on ethnicity and other things, based on political interest, all the time, about 80% of people who give out responses will be influenced by the political fraternity they support. So I'm saying that perception, yes, we cannot throw that away. But not until court of competent jurisdiction has jailed somebody, I will not validate but I will also not throw away perception. So we are still here. We have a few minutes to go. Let's hear from Honorable Ricketts Hagan. Then I'll take final points from uh, Professor Abdullah. And the final word will go to Dr. Amwa. Yes, uh, Honorable Hagan. Yeah, I, I, I like the idea Doc is, uh, you know, staying with this. Uh, uh, the perception. The perception, you know. That we should not is... base or judge people based on perception. Yeah. Yes. But, but we should uh, also throw it away. But it's the, the point of the matter is that as a society, we are not doing enough in fighting corruption. Perfect. And as I said, and corruption yeah. is endemic in our society. Perfect. From the bottom up, Perfect. most of the time you look at and say politicians. But a lot of the time, the focus is on um, high-level government officials. Well, or, there are is, that, of, is that unfair? There are a lot of things that we all do, you know, 
trying to get your, your child fixed in a school that he or she did not qualify to go. There's so many things that we do are all, you know, corruption. But we have done certain things over and over that we don't even see them to be a corrupt act because it's become a norm. You know, when somebody is doing something for you, and you take money from an envelope or whatever and give it to that person. It looks like normal. That's what, you know. But basically, you are corrupting somebody from doing their work. If somebody, after doing something for you and you feel like going to say thank you to the person, but the moment you put an envelope on the person's table once something of yours is in front of that person, you know, you are basically trying to influence that person. But I'm well, saying well, that well, well, it starts from the top. Okay, but will things ever improve? Because well, I also get it, a sense it, it that to, there is a certain like, fatigue. Like Professor said, it's got to be start with the leadership. If we are actually showing signs up there by His Excellency the President and the government that they are ready to fight corruption and they mean it to fight it, wherever that corruption is coming from, whether it's coming from the government, I mean, I'm not saying that if when we were in office, I had done something wrong and the government finds out I should not be prosecuted. Mm -hmm. But you look at the timing of when certain things are done and you realize that this was not just done because they found, but it was done for a reason. So itself becomes a corruption on it. On yeah, itself. because corruption is not always about it's taking money. It's not always money. about taking money. <laughs> But trying to do abuse of things, power, abuse of power, and all that influence corruption. peddling. As I said in the report, if you read the actual report, I mean there are indices that these guys that um, Transparency International use in coming up with this. It is not just plucked from 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 the air. So they are standing on something to do this aggregation and come with these numbers, which they've been doing for years, and they'll do it for many countries and basically, you know, rank or, or rate them. So we should be taking this thing serious, perception or not, and work towards cleaning this country from the excessive corruption, which is basically affecting our development everywhere, in central government, in assemblies, in wherever you look, in the private sector. The, 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 the society has become so endemic with corruption sure. that we are losing so much money not only at government level but across you know people are not being being honest you know it's not as you said right it's not just about money but there's so many people that you know people are cheating people out these are all corruption you know somebody sells you a land and goes and sell the same land somebody sells a land to you and go and sell the same land to somebody else and create a whole lot of problems and all that. These are all corrupt practices. And we need to look at that. But when you get a president, who tells us? So, so what do you want to tell the president and the government? This will be like well, your final comment. Well, what, I, what I want to tell the president, that he should not only be seen to be fighting corruption, but he should actually mean it and fight it. And it doesn't matter where it's coming from. Whether it's in the opposition or it's in government, the government must be seen. Not just say that somebody has done something, oh, we've done investigation at Jubilee House or Flagstaff House, and then the person is cleared. They should go through due process. If they need to be prosecuted, the Attorney General should not stop there. Because look, Attorney General may choose to investigate something or not. They may have the facts and decide not to bring it out, or they may not have it. We should see some fairness in trying to deal with issues of corruption because it's snowballing. And the time will come that corruption will consume all of us. That's where we need to be careful. All right. Final point, uh, Professor Abdullahi. Yes. Well, first, I would like to say that if you look at Singapore during the time of Liu Kuan Yew, the country was very corrupt and true leadership it brought down uh, corruption. If you look at Mauritius, the prime minister, a lady who used the credit card of a private company foundation she was on, was forced to resign. Now, uh, if we really want to fight corruption in this country, first of all, we must enforce our laws, which is 
uh, the, the Procurement Act, the uh, Financial Administration Act, the Whistleblower Act, should, all these should work. But also there should be strict declaration of assets before one takes over, uh, goes into uh, power, during the course they were in power and after. And above all, we should educate our people that uh, corruption actually affects the economy, affects all of us. Uh, Jifa, even though it's a perception, whatever you want to point to it, if I'm an investor and I know that your country is perceived as corrupt, am I going to come and invest in your country? Sure, sure. If I don't invest in your country, then you have sure. problems with unemployment, with growth of your economy. Apart from that, it is going to be difficult mm -hmm. for even local investors to invest in their own country. They will put their money elsewhere because <laughs> they are not for the Christmas. All right. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Abdullah. Thank Final you. point to you, uh, Dr. Amwa. People are concerned about corruption because if we are losing all this money, then they don't want to pay e-levy. You know what? And so that uh, is a concern that people have. I agree 100% with Professor. And that's why I say that we can't throw away perception index. That what they've done, I respect. <laughs> I mean, No, but to. you are not addressing the issue I raised. The Which? monies we are leaking. It's, it's, you just said it. There are issues that have been said. You know, you, you, you know the time is short. I'll come to it. <laughs> but what I said was, it can influence decision making, and that's why he's listing them. And I agree with you 100. It can, and that's why we should also be careful that this perception will be said that about 90 percent of the time it should be true, because some of the perceptions are entirely false. Some are also possibly true. And my brother MP here also says something which is also 100% true. We are limiting corruption to only NDC and PP. But can we say the police? That doesn't mean all policemen. No, I can't say that. There are good ones and bad ones. Even NDC and PP, there are good ones and bad ones. Let me give you my story. Recently, you heard that police had arrested me. And they said also, that I can tell you, it's in court, so I won't speak. But 90% of what they said was not true. The if, police. I'm telling you, you will come public. Even when they said I had been asked to come to court. It was your car that was arrested. I'm coming, please. I'm explaining. You don't want okay. to listen to me. I'm listening. I'm not saying it's not my car. Dog, the, okay. case, the case is in court. Yeah, but I'm surprised that you have oh, not even no, listened to I'm the facts. Listening. When they said I had not come to court okay. and that they had issued bench warrant, they knew it was not true. They had to go back to the court to plead with the court to rescind that thing. Did they come back to tell Ghanaians it was not true? You will hear subsequently. I'm not saying I had done wrong or not, but I'm saying that. Things in the public domain that give people perception. We should look at that carefully. Because corruption is a very big issue. As you said, some people don't want to give pay tax. But they think we are abusing their funds, which is true. Sometimes perception is influenced their decision not to also pay. You're talking about, look, Switzerland. I'm working with a professor on a project, okay? He said that 20 years ago, about 20, somebody, government official, uh, use something, something to buy sneaker, toffee, sweets. That's the only corruption case they've had. Why? Prof says something nice. Enforcement of even the anti-corruption tools. We are not doing that well. Whether people and this, they are there. But the issue is, so those in charge of these institutions, they are also not helping Mahama and Anano. If you ask your husband to take care of your things and he said, what will happen? So, as Prof is saying, all of us talking about corruption, most of us are directly or indirectly involved. So, we should change our mindset, our attitude, other than that, this country, access declaration, Jifa, our system is said that it's very difficult. Don't let us lie. Well, you the MPs change I'm it. I'm coming. Do you know why? Me, I've been doing farm. If you go to Kuala West, I have the largest farm plantation. I produce palm oil. I did mixed cropping. Most of my revenues, I'm going to be honest with you, the way you, if you are paid in our system, it's even very difficult to sometimes substantiate the things you've done. So the whole system has to, we need to have new paradigm shift that will redefine our corporate focus. Other than that, you buy a car, you never store, but it will be very, very difficult the way our culture is to even substantiate how you bought your car. So all these things, we have to look into them, define the parameters well so that when I'm found guilty or otherwise, it will be based on facts and it will, it will have the materiality that we need. Yes. Other than that, every day somebody will be jailed. Thank you I'm very sure much. you've taken a gift to buy something before. I've taken a gift to buy something before. 
How okay. do you substantiate that? A tell Ghanaians, oh, uh, how can you give me this gift? And I bought. They will not even believe you. All right. Thank so you very our much. So our system should more. also be re-looked before some of these foreign policies and frameworks adopted and used here. Can, because can they, I, look, can, look can, if you buy even Kassama, thank you very if much, Kassama, Papa, but we have to end. No, if you buy Kassama, they didn't receive. Yeah, no, no, can I just say something important that Prof, Prof said? Thank you very no, much, uh, Dr. Amwai. Yes, quick one, uh, yeah. Honorable Hagan. One of the things that uh, Prof said that Prof is very Nation. important. Yeah, he said a lot of With this perception yeah. thing, it's about the development of the country sure. and investment into the country. Mm. If people perceive us to be corrupt, if people perceive Ghana yeah. to be a difficult place to do business, then we are not going to get the necessary, uh, you know, FDIs that should come into the So country. people should stop putting falsehood also into the public domain to, to drive perception. Well, it's also very dangerous. Yeah, but they will cut bits and pieces, put together, and say that the guy is saying Dr. Hagan is saying this defies, and then people will believe the lies. Well, yes, we should also look yes, at that. Not, hey, per perception issues should be addressed. It is perception that we are sitting here today on e level because there's a perception. That government is not using our money as well. Yeah, so do, we do, need your, to work do your constituents support e levy uh, on oh, our I've explained to I can't say all, but I was in Kumasi for about two days to educate the public why we think it's important. And the responses were very good. But I can't give scientific or scientific figure and say oh 90%. I won't come Okay, back. so at least you you say a lot of them support. Honorable Rick is that you said I, your constituents they don't support it. People should send you around the okay. country to educate. All right, people. thank you, thank you I'm very sure much, gentlemen. Buy. And that's yeah, how we bring our show to an end. It's been very hot. Many now. thanks to our guest, the honorable uh, yeah, Dr. Yeah, no, Stephen Amwa, to the honorable uh, George Ricketts Hagan and to Professor David Abdullahi. I'm Jifa Bampo. Thanks for all your messages. Sorry you couldn't read all of them today. But join us again next week for another hot, interesting edition. Up next is Warm Up Plus.